Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches, and if you're a sixth grader, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to start the sixth grade mathematics curriculum for the year. But wait, before we get started, you need to have an understanding of some of this vocabulary, such as quotient, estimate, ratio, whole number, least, and remainder. If you've been watching other videos in my series here, you would think I'm going to start going into it, laying down a definition and showing an example. No, you're in middle school. You should already know this. If you don't, I highly recommend that you get a composition book, label it math vocabulary, or math examples, or my math dictionary, something like that so you can go in and write down these words and write the definition and an example. Include the example so you have a thorough understanding of what this vocabulary means. Let's take a look here. Divide multi-digit numbers. Number one, 6,114 divided by 63. Wait, look here. There's some directions here. This is telling me what I need to know. It's not just solving this and you're like, what, what does estimate mean? Well, first it says estimate. Then find the quotient. Write the remainder, if any, as a fraction. So those are the steps that we need to go through when we evaluate these problems. So let's get started. It says here, estimate. Well, let's set this up first because it'll give you a little bit better idea of what we're looking for here. Four, one, one, six. I'm going to use this as my division symbol. And then 63. If you notice, I have this graph here. It just helps me keep all my numbers in a column. So if you're not able to write straight and your division's going all over the place, wiggling around, this might help you to keep everything straight. I have this set up. So my next step is to estimate. Well, to do that, I'm going, well, I can round this number down. 60 is closer, or 63 is closer to 60. And 6,000 is closer to 6,114. So I can do this in my head, but you may have to write it down. Uh, I'm just putting it down here to show you my thought process. So I'm going, okay, there's 6,000, there's 60. A lot of times I can just go, oh, one, zero, zero, because 60 here, that's that one, and that comes to zero, and then I just have two zeros after that. My estimate is gonna be 100. I think it's gonna be closer, I think this is high because if it was 100, closer to 100, this would be 61. All right, so is 61 divisible by 63? No, but I know that 630, which is uh, 10 times 63, and all I need to do is just subtract 63 from that. So I need to borrow from here. There's a 2. That makes that 10, So I've because I have 10 ones that I'm borrowing from, from that 10 column, and it's going to be 7. I need to borrow some from over here. So there's 12 tens, and that makes this a five. 12 minus six is six. Bring that down, 567. So I can say, and this is, this right here, this is nine times 63. That's So I'm gonna put my nine right here, and look at that. So this is definitely gonna be 90 or greater, which is close to 100 to my estimate. Let's write this down. So five, six, seven. I'm going to subtract that. So 11 minus seven is four. And I have 10 minus six is four. The fives, they make zero. So I bring this four down, 444. I know that five, it's not 567. It's not going to be eight times because if I have 567 here, I'll make that six better. If I subtract 63, I'm still going to have 504, and that's going to be 8 times. More than likely, it's going to be 7 times 63. But let's check our math here. So 63, I'm going to subtract that from 504, so that's going to be 1. Uh, let's see, i got to borrow from there. There's going to be a 4, 10, so that's going to be 4, and bring down that 4. So 441, that here, 441. Subtract, and that gives me 3. So that's going to be a remainder of 3. So I'm going to put this here 7 because this is 7 times. So 97 is close to my estimate. I have my quotient, which is 97. And it says remainder. Right here I have a remainder of 3, but it says as a fraction. How do I do that? So that's going to be 97 and 3 over 63. Now wait. Whenever you have a fraction here, and if it's in a test or a quiz or something like that, if you can look at it and go, wait a minute, I think that 63 is divisible by 3. 
or there's a common denominator there so you can make it a little bit lower so I'm gonna say let's see here three goes in there once and I know that three goes in there one and then there are two times so it's gonna be 21 so my total answer is 97 and 1 21st that's my final answer and that is close to my estimate because if I'm rounding this number here it rounds up to 100. Number two, here I have 11,050 divided by 26. Again, let's just set this up. 0, 5, 0, 1, 1. Get my fraction there. And then 6 and 2. All right, I'm looking at this and here I can say I can round up to 30. That, that might help out, but I'm thinking it might be better to take this down to 25 because it's 26 is closer to 25. And here instead of 10,000 maybe, or 11,000. Let's go with 11,000. Here's 11,000 divided by 25. And I know that uh, 4 times 25 is 100. And then look at this. I got another one. It's going to be 4. And then it's going to be 0. So that's going to be my estimate right here. And it's going to be 440. Let's see how close I'm in for that as we go through and do the math. We have 26. And 11 is not divisible by 26, but 110 is. And we use that same principle, what we just did here. You know, 25 is 100, so I just multiplied 25 by 4 is 100. And if I add, there's four extra ones here, so that would be 104. So I'm just going to say 4 right here. Look at that. That's a good sign. And that's going to give me 104. Subtracting that, I know that this cancels out. 10 minus 4 is going to be 6. And then I bring this down. There's 5. And let's see here. It is 65, 26. I can probably do 26 times 2. And that's going to give me 12. 2 times 2 is 4. And 5, 52. I can't add another 26 to that. So it's going to be 4, 2, and 52. Again, here we go. There's 5 minus 2 is 3. There's 1. 130. Let's see what we can do for that. So 130, I know there's 104 is 4 times that. So 104, that's 4 times that. If I had another 26, look at that. There's 0. Got a 10 there. So 4, 5, so 425 looks is my final answer without a remainder. Is my estimate close? Yeah, I went over a little bit, but that's very close. I mean, I'm within, what, uh, 15. Here we continue, same format. So we're going to estimate, find the quotient, write the remainder as a fraction, if any. Let's take a look. So I have 3,150 divided by 9. Let's just set it up. 0, 5, 1, 3, and 9. Now here, I would just look at this and say, wait a minute, I'm just going to round this 9 up to 10, take that off, and I'm going to say it's going to be close to 315, because 10 times 315 is 3,150. Let's get started. So 31, nope, but I know that 3, look at that, it's in the 100 spot there, is going to give me 27. That's going to give me 45. What times 9? That's going to be 5. So 5 times 9 is 45. Subtract that. And again, I get 0, 0, 0. So that's close to my estimate, 35 short of that. A little more thought, I could have added some back into it. Okay, let's look at number 4. I have 2,115 divided by 75. Again, let's just set it up first. 5, 1, 1, 2. Notice how this grid just makes it easier for me to get this set up. And 5 and 7. I'm looking at this and my brain is saying, hey, Instead of going up to 80, I'm going to round down to 70 because I know that 7 times 30 is 210. Let's set this up. So I'm going to do 210 or 21. Let's do 2100 because I have those two zeros. I was just thinking ahead in 70, but it's still going to be 210 because that I'm just going to take that zero off, take that zero off. So 210 divided by 7, that's going to be 3. That's 21. Tracked it, 0, 0. So it's going to be 30. That's, I'm going to put that in as my estimate. 
I'm going to start this off and I'm going, well, can I do 3 times 75? No, because I know that 75 plus 75 is 150. I mean, there's just, that's 6 25s. If you count by 25, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150 is going to do it. 150, 2 times 75, so I'm going to do 2 there. Now, maybe going, wait a minute, that's less than this. Hold on a second. Remember, we just have an estimate. I think I'm going to be close with that. Let's subtract. It's going to be 1. Again, there's that 1 there because I'm bringing that over here. So that's going to give me 11 minus 5 is 6. I'm thinking, so 150 is 2 times 75. 300 is 4 times 75. So if I double this to 600, now I have to double that. So that's going to be 8. And that gives me 600 with a remainder of 15. So my answer is 28 and 15 70 fifths. But again, we want to reduce this fraction. So both these numbers here, 15 and 75, are divisible by 5. So 5 goes into 15 3 times, and it goes into 75 15 times. But wait, we're not done, because 3 goes into itself once, and it goes into there 5 times. So the answer that we're looking for is 28 and 1 fifth. Number five, find the least whole number that can replace. And it says that question mark to make the statement true. Let's look here. So it's replacing this right here. What can we do to make this statement true? And it's the least whole. So we have to understand what least is and whole number. Whole number is not going to be a fraction or a decimal. It's like one, two, three, four, five. And the least one. So it has to be the smallest number possible for this right here while still maintaining a whole number. This is my strategy to answer this math problem. What I would do, and this is just my thinking, I would say 110 is equal to, and I'm gonna, instead of using a question mark, I'm just gonna say x divided by 47. And I know that another way to write this is gonna be 110 is equal to x divided by 47, so I'm making it into a fraction. And the reason I'm doing that is because then I can take the next step. So the next step after this is gonna be, I'm gonna multiply each side by 47. So I'm gonna do that here, I'm gonna do it here. So both, if I do it on both sides, it keeps it balanced. So we have a scale that we have to keep balanced. What I would do here, 110, 47, zero, and I'm multiplying here, so zero times seven is zero. That's gonna be seven. 7, 0, 0, because I'm bringing that down, 4 and 4, so I have 0, 7, that's going to be 11, put that over there, 5, 1, 7, 0, so now I'm going to have 5, 1, 7, 0 is equal to x, but we're not done yet because we have to find the least whole number that can replace this here. Instead of having an inequality, this is an equality. So what I would do, and it has to be a whole number, so I would write it as 110 is less than, and instead of being 5170, I would make that 5171 divided by 47. See how I did that? I kept it as a whole number, and I made this here, this division problem, greater than 110 by doing that. Number six, the 128 employees of a company volunteer 12,480 hours in 26 weeks. On average, how many hours do they all volunteer per week? On average, how many hours does each employee volunteer per week? So we don't know how many hours each individual volunteers because it says it doesn't give us that, that data. That's why they say on average here and on average here. So we're, we're finding two answers. And the first one is to find out how many they all volunteer in one week. First, we're going to find out what's the total hours on average that they work in one week. Here we have 12,480 hours in 26 weeks. That's going to be hours per week. So we can just do that. We're like, oh, wait a minute. It's going to be 12,480 divided by 26. Again, if we're looking at hours per per week, 12, 4, 80 divided by 26. Do 26 into 120 into 12? Nope. So I'm going to start here at 124. We know from a previous problem, 26 times 4 is going to give me 104. 
If we try doing it another time, it's going to give us 130. That's going to be greater, so we have to do 4. Bring this down, 104. Subtract it, and I have a 0, 2, 208. What do you know? I double this, so instead of being 4 times, it's going to be 8 times. So 4, 8, 208. Bring down that 0 here, and that's still going to be 0. But wait, we're not done. We still have to write it out. So on average, how many hours do they all volunteer for a week? Average 480 hours. And I'm going to use this as per week. Now you may have to write this out as a complete sentence. I just want to save a little bit of time. So average 480 hours per week, and that's going to give us the foundation for the next part of this. Let's look at the second part of this. It says on average, how many hours does each employee volunteer per week? So again, we have 26 weeks and all this other stuff, but we have a starting point because we know they work 480 hours per week. So I'm going to say 480. That's going to be divided by 120 employees. We set up our division problem, such as 480 divided by 128. Now, we can look at this and go, wait a minute, well, how do we get started? Well, I know that 128 times 2 is 256. 128 times 2, that's going to be 16. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 2 times 1 is 2. Now, that is less than that, but I think we can get another 128 in there. All you have to do is just add it in here. 128. Again, that gives me 4. It's going to be 8, 384. So I know I'm going to start here out with here with 3. That's going to be 384. I subtract 0. Oh, I need to borrow some from there. That's going to be 7, 10, minus 4 is 6. 7, I can't do that. So it has to be 17. That makes a 3. So 17 minus 8 is 9. And I can't go any further, but I want to get it a little more precise. So I could have it 96 over 128. That might be easier to figure out, but let's keep going. So I'm going to add a zero here. So notice how I put a decimal point there. I'm going to put it right here as well, just as a reminder. So I have 960. Well, if I have 384, and that's going to be, that's three times that. And I'm looking at it going, well, if I double this, that'll make it more than 960. It'll be like 968. So I'm probably going to have to do, let's try instead of eight times, let's try seven times 128. So 128. And I'm going to multiply that by seven. So eight times seven is 56. Seven times two is 14 plus five more is going to be 19. So I put the nine down here carry that one over. 7 times 1 is 7. There's 8. So I have 896. So there's 7 times that. And that's close. It's narrowing it down. 896. Again, I subtract. It looks like I'm going to need to add another 0 here. So I'm going to have, let's see here, 5 there, 10. That's going to be 4. Again, I have to borrow some from there. So 8. That's going to be 15 minus 9 is 6. 640. That looks like a number I can work with. So I have 640. I wonder what we can do about that. So I've had, I have 7 times that. This is going to be 3 times that. Let's split it in the middle. Let's, let's do 128 times 5. So 5 times 8 is 40. There's a 0. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 14. Our 4 is makes 14, and 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. Look at that, 640, that makes that 0, and I put that 5 up here. So we have, I'm going to say, each employee volunteers on average 3.75 hours per week. That's it for number six. Thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches. If there are any terms or mathematical practices that I've been showing you within this video that you don't completely understand, I highly encourage you to go back and, and just search my library at this URL for all your basic mathematics. And now I say it's kindergarten through eighth grade, but there's going to be a section in there for sixth grade, and I have fractions, and I have all these different playlists that you can go through and look, or just type in a term and see if it pops up. Thank you for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, watch me correct my mistakes on TikTok at Mr. Woods Teaches.